We've got 80 amps outside, a bit cloudy, 5.5 kilowatt. But this morning, let me show you quickly. This morning, when I when I woke up at about 7.30 or something, um, I found the system to be down to 3.7%. 3.7%. There, there you can see it. Look at this. Yeah, just under 4% this morning. Because look at this load, what kicked in overnight and drained my battery all the way down. And I just, <laughs> whenever I wake up in the morning, the first thing to check is the VRM. How much percent do we have in the battery? Isn't that sick, right? So I turned off all the load. Well, it's a long story. So I'll show you this in a future video then. Very interesting stuff, but we need to, we need to change something. We need to figure something out. But future video, different problem. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny, hot Australia. Yeah, totally cloudy today. Which is not, not my preferred weather to do battery testing. But in today's show, in today's episode, we want to talk about for the very last time, in all details, about this guy. The Seplos BMS. <laughs> I know, right? But you know, there is still so much to discover. But I can also see people are getting tired now. Me talking about the Seplos BMS and the Victron system and what is working, what is not working and what weird design. Okay, anyway, in today's video, last time talking about the Zeplos BMS, I want to show you the solution I have set up now. And I also want to show you why I won't leave it like this. And many of you have suggested this solution, but today I want to show you why it is not working. And potentially why you should not run this solution at all, maybe. It is a bit of a combination between Victron and Zeplos. It's not purely Zeplos related, not just an issue of their weird software design and BMS construction. No, the, the problem is also related to the Lynx shunt, which I, which I have um, installed and connected now. Because this is something most people have suggested now. Why don't you use the Lynx shunt and connect the battery to it and let the Victron shunt figure everything out? I'm running this for a week now and it's catastrophic. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Ooh, I made 38 kilowatt hours already today. Nice. But this is not part of the video. Hang on, hang on. SPED calibration center. Let's go in there. Okay, so this is our test setup now. And at the moment, you can see our MPPTs are under external control. That means the Seplos BMS of the two batteries is controlling our Victron system, fully controlling it. So the solar charge controllers are not using the internal settings anymore, as you have seen in many previous videos about the Seplos BMS. They are solely listening to what the BMS is telling them. So if we go into the Victron remote console and go in the settings, okay, uh, pool fence system, network operation, and here you can see it is a slave. It is externally controlled by the BMS. The charge voltage is 55.2 volts and the charge current is 35 amps at the moment. So what parameters have we set in the BMS? Uh, parameters here. We have set 58.4 volts as the maximum charge voltage for this battery. This would be 3.65 volts per cell times 16, 58.4. So this is the maximum we can charge the battery to before the BMS should disconnect your battery for safety reasons, right? And you can already see the solar charge controller charges only to 55.2 volts, which is uh, 3.45, my absorption voltage. But the BMS is set higher to a higher level now. And they are not corresponding anymore because apparently a lot of people told me this is how you do it, right? You use the DVCC in the Victron system to lower your charge limit to 55.2 or to whatever you want to charge it and set the BMS internally to a higher voltage in the BMS settings directly. And we've got a charge current limit of 100 amps, but the solar charge controller is only a 35 amp controller. That's why it shows only 35 amps as the maximum charge current. And we also have a discharge current limit of 220 amps. And again, I've shown you this before in a video, how to manipulate, how to change these settings here, the parameters to, um, to your needs. Settings, DVCC, 
as I said, DVCC is turned on because we have done the test without DVCC and it was like the voltages were all over the place and the battery didn't get fully charged and the balancer didn't kick in because the voltage of the battery was too low, far lower than what was measured by the MPPT and the solar charge controller thought the battery is full but it wasn't. So the BMS and the battery were waiting for more power which didn't come. So this didn't quite work. So here we limit the charge current to 35 amps. This is the maximum the solar charge controller can do. And we also limit the battery charge voltage to 55.2. This is what the DVCC does. So the BMS is actually our protection device now. It protects our battery at 58.4 volts, maximum voltage we can charge it to. But on a daily base, we only charge to 55.2, which is 3.45 volts per cell. This is what I do. As you know. So going a little further down, we also sharing the voltage sense here. That means the solar charge controller measures a different voltage than the actual BMS. But with this switch turned on, it actually synchronizes the BMS's voltage to the solar charge controller. So we're having the same voltage in both devices. So as you can see at the moment here, this is like a bit of a hybrid situation we have now. So the BMS is there, measures the voltage and the current going into the battery and controls the Victron system, but not 200%. Because we are not using the parameters of the, of the BMS to charge the battery, we are using the parameters of the DVCC of the Victron system to charge the battery. So limiting the voltage to 55.2 and the parameters, as you can see here, of the BMS are far higher. Charge current is higher, charge voltage is higher. So the BMS allows to charge to these parameters, but my DVCC is throttled down to what I would like to charge the battery to. And this, this will work now, kind of. But again, this is not what people told me why this SEP loss is so outstanding. You know, for, for months since I started the channel here, there people told me in the comment section, oh, you need to, you need to test these SEP loss BMSs. They are amazing. They connect to a Victron system. They control everything. It is just superb and, and working and great. Andy, test this. You will like it. If you have seen previous videos here about the SEP loss BMS, uh, probably not. I'm not a big fan. So that's why I call this one here a hybrid a hybrid solution. The BMS is still connected and is our battery monitor, but it is not really controlling the charge anymore. This is done by the Victron system, by the DVCC. And this kind of works now, but we are still having the issue that... Okay, let me quickly... I need to go back and forward a bit here to show you the parameters. So uh, let's go quickly back into the DVCC. So we are maximum charge voltage is 55.2. So this is what the DVCC tells the solar charge controller to charge to 55.2. But we can see here the MPPT solar charge controller is still under external control. So the internal settings are still not valid and it would charge to 55.2 volts and then keep the voltage there forever. It will never go into float mode. It will never lower the charge voltage by itself because it's externally controlled. So this is not optimal because we don't want to, we don't want to keep our battery on 3.45 volt per cell forever until the sun goes down and then the next day again. So the solution for that is to go a little bit further down in the DVCC, basically all the way down. And you can see the controlling BMS is the SEP loss BMS, right? If you go into these options here, you can say no BMS. If I tick this box, it now says controlling BMS, no BMS control. So the BMS is not telling the system anymore how to charge, what to charge, what to do, how fast to charge, what the charging parameters are, nothing. So now after a while, you will get an error message on the Victron system because the, let me see if I can, yeah, here, pull fence alarm, hashtag 67 BMS connection lost. This is what you will get after a while, after a moment, five minutes or so, when you disable the BMS in the DVCC. Solution for that is network operation of the MPPT. Go all the way down and here it says BMS control is enabled automatically when a BMS is present. Reset if the system configuration has changed or if there's no BMS present. Okay, we just press the button here. Bang, and it says now external control, standalone, 
55.2, BMS controlled, no. See, there is a different text now in the network operation. And now, if you go back into the uh, VIM, we can see that. Look at this, it's already in bulk. And now we have the internal setting working again for the MPPT solar charge controller with the Seplos BMS still reporting the voltage, the state of charge, the temperature, everything to the system. So this looks like a pretty good solution actually, right? That's what I thought too. Now you've got the BMS as the battery monitor giving, giving us all the information. If you go into the advanced tab, here, Seplos BMS gives us the charge voltage limit, the charge current limit, discharge limit, everything still there. But we are not acting on this anymore because we turned off the control mechanism. Here gives us the battery temperature. And also here we can see the difference between the highest cell in these two batteries and the lowest cell. So deviation still shows in the Victron system. All the information are still coming through from this from the Seplos BMSs to the Victron system, but we are using the MPPT and its internal charging algorithm. So 55.2 absorption for an hour, and then we fall back to float uh, 53.6, and everything is fine, right? Well, as you know, so this is what you can achieve by turning off the BMS control in the DVCC and go all the way down, and there are no BMS control. So, and then we can also turn off our limit battery voltage here in the DVCC and can control this all from our MPPT solar charge controller directly as we have done it before. That's the standard function of the solar charge controller. Bulk absorption, float, everything is working again. Uh, well, kind of. Because as you may have seen in one of my last videos, if you follow this channel closely, I have also shown you how the Seplos BMS resets to 100% state of charge when the battery is full, right? And it only does it, and this BMS only does it if we are hitting the charge voltage limit, the 58.4 volts, or if one of the cells goes over or reaches the 3.65 volts. So yeah, exactly. Only if the BMS trips either cell voltage or pack voltage over protection, it also resets to 100% state of charge. And because we are never reaching these 58.4 volts here, never ever, the, the state of charge of the battery will also never go to 100%. It will always be under 94, 95, 96, and then drifts from there up and down, whatever, tolerances you have when measuring that, what the BMS thinks the state of charge is, but it never resets to 100%. So, well, the number or figure of the state of charge is one of our main criteria here for the battery. This is what we are looking at the first when I open the VRM or open any other device here in the garage. I always look what's the percentage or the state of charge. And if this is not fairly accurate, if this is like 10% off and never reaches 100%. So how am I supposed to know if the battery is on 90% or if it has reached 100% already, but it just doesn't show. So total shit show. But I've discussed this in the other video already. I'll link this down below if you haven't seen it, but this is not the solution either. So what other options do we have now, right? We've done all the testing with the Seplos BMSs, have turned off DVCC, have turned it on are using the BMS only as a battery monitor like now and the control is back to Victron with the solar charge controller. So this is the super hybrid solution now while the BMS is only reporting stuff to the Victron system but not, but the Victron system is not reacting on it anymore. Uh, as you can see, this is all not good, right? This is not good. So again, at the moment we have got the Seplos BMS is connected to the Victron system and they are reporting the data to the Victron system, but the Victron system doesn't react on that or doesn't use these um, parameters to charge the battery or to do anything else. So this is pretty much the same configuration now what we have over here in the battery shelf. Yeah, we've got one battery shunt and then we've got different BMSs connected to it. If we connect these batteries here, as I have shown you in one of the videos before, 
We are USB to RS485 adapter. We can connect these BMSs, these three different BMSs and report the data as well to Victron. So there would be no difference between this system then and this system then. So I don't know what people are talking about when they're saying Cepros has good communication. We can achieve the same with any other BMS. So, and then people say, okay, well, Andy, forget about all this. Why, why don't you, why don't you use the links shunt you have set in your system? As you can see, I already plugged this one in here. This is a normal Cat5 uh, network cable. And there's also a terminator on the other side. There are two ports for VE CAN. There's, there's a BMS CAN and a VE CAN. And the yellow cable here goes to our links shunt. And this is using the VE CAN with one cable going to the shunt and the other one is the terminator as well. And we go back in the remote console into the settings and we can already see the link shunt is showing up here and shows us 90% state of charge. Look at this, 90% to 81%. You can go into the settings, battery bank, and here you can set exactly the same parameters as in the Victron smart shunt I have shown you in all details. So at 55 volt, it considers the battery as fully charged. The tail current goes under 2% for three minutes and then the Lynx shunt resets to... <coughs> You can set the pure code expert, the charging efficiency factor. These are all the same settings we had in the smart shunt as well. So I thought, well, this is probably the way to go then. So, you know, we are not using the actual BMS as the battery monitor, but the Lynx shunt. Because it's a Victron device, it should know better how to calculate state of charge. And here quickly we can see the two cables coming from our battery all the way up to the Lynx power in. Just uh, This is just the bus bar inside, positive and negative. This goes through our shunt, measures the amps going into the battery and out of the battery. And here are our solar charge controller and the load our Xia inverter connected and the shunt knows all about the energy going in the battery or out of the battery. That is perfect, right? Okay, so let's go into our settings, go into system setup, and here we have set the Seplos Smart BMS as our battery monitor. But we can change this option and can say, well, this is not our BMS anymore, this is now our proper shunt. So we change this one to shunt and we go back in the VIM. Well, and now the state of charge shows 90% all of a sudden because the smart shunt measures a bit differently than the BMS. And I have already calibrated this shunt. So fully charged the battery and then it jumped to 100% state of charge. There, there you can see it here, 100% state of charge all the time, bang. Where does it get the voltage from? Well, it measures the voltage directly in the shunt. But then you have all the connected bus bars, connections and the cables back to the batteries and the actual battery voltage might be different. But because we have turned on SVS, the shared voltage sense in the DVCC in Victron, it actually takes the voltages of the Seplos BMS and shares this with the shunt. So that's all good. And you can also see we are still getting the temperature reported to the Lynx shunt from the Seplos BMS. Looking in the advanced tab here, we now can set up the Lynx shunt, whatever the shunt measures. We also can have the Seplos BMS in it, whatever the Seplos BMS measures. It shows us different parameters, different curves. And if we go all the way down, so we still have the minimum and maximum cell voltages shown here in the graph. So here again, another form of the hybrid situation. The BMS still reports the data to Victron, but Victron has its own settings for charging and controlling the battery. So MPPT uses its internal algorithm again. Everything seems to be fine. And I said, yeah, well, f it with the Seplos BMS and all the communication shit. Ah, I want to show you another feature here. If we go back into the remote console in the DVCC, now go to your system setup where we can set the Lynx shunt as the battery monitor and go all the way down 
uh, battery measurements here, battery measurements go in there and you can see the link shunt and the Zeppelos BMS. The Zeppelos BMS is hidden, link shunt is visible. If we set the Zeppelos BMS as visible and go back into our VRM, there, look at this, isn't that cool? We've got the Lynx shunt reporting our as our battery monitor, resetting to real 100% state of charge as we have programmed it. Gives us all the perfect parameters, everything. And we also have the Zeppelos BMS reporting down here as well with voltage, current and power. And another state of charge for these two batteries, of course. And I'm wondering, because see this free space here, if we can have even another BMS showing up in here and I have this tower sitting here, this other 48 volt battery, but this one has a very similar BMS to the Zeppelos BMS. So I'm wondering if this can be hooked up via CAN to our system as well and shows up as a second BMS in here. Watch this space. So this all seems pretty good, right? But now we've got the actual perfect solution. We've got a smart shunt installed now and can hook up the batteries to our bus bar. Connect this battery to the bus bar and some other batteries are sitting there in the box. And we also have the other Zeppelos box here still sitting. I know there will be more batteries coming for sure. And we can all connect them to the bus bar here and the Lynx shunt takes care of the state of charge and combines this all together. So this would be the the very similar setup to what we have here smart shunt up here and then and then different battery banks with different bms's down here same situation as here not much difference just we are using a bit more information from the bms's this time but as i said but as i said we can achieve the same with the helltech the overkill and the jk bms using rs485 and reporting all this information back to victron yeah, and uh, two days ago I got this all running like this and it showed all up and, and I was pretty happy with the result. And then I, um, I realized, let me show you here, uh, was it this? Here, here, here you can see it. This was around at around noontime when I switched to the Lynx shunt and had the Zeppelos BMS only down here as a reporting BMS. But I could not see any consumption anymore of my air conditioner showing up in the VRM here. And even it showed up here as DC power 1.8, 1.9 kilowatts for the air conditioning. It didn't calculate anything in the consumption field down here. And I didn't know what that was. I looked through all the settings and did all the testing back and forward, back and forward and couldn't figure it out. So I started Googling, had a look in the forums and Absolutely, people had the same issue with the Lynx shunt. The Victron Lynx shunt is not able to capture your DC power. It will work fine if you have AC loads like a Victron Multi Plus or any other inverter. But if you have DC power running, it will not be captured by the Lynx shunt. Yeah, exactly. And the same as other people said in this uh, thread as well, well, this all worked just fine with the battery monitor, with the Victron battery monitor, the BMV or what is it called, or the Victron Smart Shunt, what we have installed in our battery shelf. Here, off-grid garage. Here, see this DC power? This gets converted into kilowatt hours and this all adds up as consumption and shows here as these red bars in the graph. So not only pure AC power, but also DC power. These all are kilowatt hours of our consumption. Apparently this is not working with the Lynx shunt. Well, there's something else I want to show you. It actually, it actually doesn't show any figures behind the decimal point. So it only shows your full numbers as your percentage of state of charge, 90, 91, 92, but not 90.1 as the smart shunt does, 70.9. But the Lynx shunt, only full numbers. The same as the Zeppelos BMS. Weirdly enough, if you hover your mouse over the graph down here, it actually gives you the percentage. So, but it doesn't show the percentage here as the number. So this is just a software glitch or upgrade necessary in the Victron VIM software to show this correctly. But at the moment it shows only full numbers. 
and I'm really questioning the benefit of having a Lynx shunt. Um, it, fit, it fits nicely into the series here. It looks good, <laughs> but the overall functionality of this Lynx shunt is just rubbish. It doesn't, measure, it doesn't measure DC power and it doesn't show you any numbers after the decimal point. So why would you choose this instead of a real smart shunt or Victron battery monitor? So the only solution would be here to have another smart shunt and run all your DC power through this smart shunt. But again, this works just fine here with a Victron smart shunt, right? Well, guys, as you have seen, you've got all the possibilities. You can change all the parameters, all the settings in the Victron system to make it somehow working with your devices. But really, at the moment, I would not recommend buying the Lynx shunt unless you don't care about the digits of your state of charge and you don't have any DC power connected to your system at all. Okay, guys, I think that is it in terms of the Seplos saga of the Seplos BMS. I... I was I was hoping this is the BMS we are all after. It has some great features and I was really hoping this is the BMS I can use for my battery shelf as well to replace all the different BMSs I have installed there with one BMS which can then communicate and controls everything. But as you have seen, this is not going to happen easily. You, know, you, can, you can use the BMS as many people, as most of the people do, as just a normal BMS protection board and leave the control with a Victron system. But again, this is not the intention of a smart BMS. A smart BMS fully controls the charging and discharging process of your system. While in what I have shown you today, this is more like a hybrid system than the BMS reports the data to the Victron system but doesn't control anything anymore. And it's only a protection board. So in theory, you can also replace this one here with a JK BMS and you would be you would be in the same situation then. And the only other benefit you would gain is a two amp active balancer with a JK BMS. And I really had big hopes with this BMS here because we can upgrade it with new firmware easily. We can just download it from the Steplos website and upgrade it. It gives us new features, fixes old bugs, and overall keeps the whole software and functionality up to date. Uh, but again here for the 10, for the 10C, for the older BMS, we have seen, I think, two uh, software updates so far. Seplos is holding back a bit with these software updates and also doesn't provide a change log. So you never know exactly what it actually breaks and what new functionality you will get. And you are dependent on people on, on YouTube and the internet to find out what actually has changed. And I was trying to discuss a lot of these details with Seplos, with the technician over there, having separate parameters, for example, which resets the BMS to 100% or not using an over-voltage protection setting as the maximum charge voltage. But these are all things they don't quite seem to understand why they should change that, because it's working as it is now. I also pitched this whole idea with the upgradability of this BMS, which is the main benefit of this BMS. It's such a great feature. I pitched this also to the sales manager of Seplos, and we had a good conversation about this. and. He was very happy about my feedback I gave them, but I don't think, again, he really understands what the potential of that is. And I know some of you have sent me emails and said, well, Andy, you overcomplicate this. Leave all the settings as they come from the factory and change maybe your charging or your balance start voltage a bit to your needs and leave all the other settings as they are. But, but you know, this is not what I'm doing here on the channel. I'm testing things out. And a lot of people have asked me, Andy, why do you spend so much time with these Seplos BMSs? Well, there is a you wanted me to test this BMS here and show how good the communication to the Victron system is. And there's also B. As I just said, I was also hoping that this is the BMS we will all be using for our parallel batteries. Not because of the good communication features it has, but of the but of the potential that we can work together with the manufacturer and change the software as per our needs. But uh, neither A nor B was very successful. So I had a look around on the market, what is actually available uh, similar to these BMSs with communication ports, which, connect, which can then connect to Victron and many, many other systems. And well, I found something very interesting. So I'm super eagerly waiting for this delivery now and to show you this other solution I have found. 
Okay, let's do a very, very quick summary of all this, what we have just learned in the last um, 25 videos or something about the Stepler's battery system here. So the BMS, I think the BMS is great. It has a lot of potential in terms of the software development. It connects very easily to the Victron system and many other systems, as I have read. The benefit of having these systems connected to your Victron system, I would say lower than 10%. So from my experience now and understanding, it doesn't really matter what kind of BMS you have in your battery. If it is a Seplos BMS or any of these other Chinese BMSs or whatever BMS is in this box there, they can all connect to your Victron system just fine as long as you have a smart shunt. I must honestly say the Victron smart shunt was the best investment I have made. It will just connect all your Seplos BMSs, the Helltech, the JK and the Overkill and Chinese number one and uh, Chinese number two. No problem at all. So if you have ordered your Seplos Mason battery boxes and you're waiting for the delivery and they're all coming with Seplos BMSs, totally fine. It'll work. But the communication benefit is tiny. So and many have asked if it makes sense to replace the Seplos BMS. Uh, with a JK BMS, for example, while this works 100% from a technical perspective, I would not do this personally. I will leave the step loss BMSs in these boxes here because, well, you're still getting some sort of benefit of them with the communication back to your system. And also you've got the display with all the information of your battery. Uh, especially if you have them stacked up like this, you can easily watch what is going on through the display. So you're getting something out of the Stablos BMS and it's not that bad, you know. It, it is not as horrible, so you need to replace it with something else. And honestly, you never know, maybe they come out with a new software update at one stage and um, everything is perfect. Everything works as we want it. It has more features, different different settings we can set. So who knows, the potential is still there with the software updates. And maybe at some stage they realize what they can do with it. Okay, guys, I would say we are finishing the video here. I mean, we can we can discuss and talk about features and non-features of the Sepplos system for another one and a half hours easily. Leave all your comments down below. As always, I will read them all and reply to your comments down there. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. And until the next video, when we move on from the Seplos BMS, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.